little Les Paul marching powder here. There we go. Just a little, not too much, Billy. You don't want to get all over your nice clothes, you know. Your fine Tuesday night dress-up clothes. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Especially when it's Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. The day that time forgot. Fred Babb t-shirt. Yep. From down there in Cambria, California. Years and years ago. This has been hanging in my closet. It's been in my drawers for... Oh, what? Probably since the early 90s. When I was traveling down there. Met a great bunch of folks in Cambria, California. Including Fred Babb. Who had his own art gallery with stuff like this on the walls. That were like... Would cover the whole wall. Yeah. Yeah, it had to be 91, 92 in there because uh, I think the Gravity album had just come out. That was 92, so Fred Babb, we salute you. He passed away a few years ago, but I think I heard from his daughter once. Holly Trout Cooper, there we go. Another Eastie, another Eastie. Patty Lorenz Hampton, welcome, Patty. Cindy Clark's in the house. Goodness gracious, goodness gracious. And Janine Boggs does live on Whitby, but I'm not going to give out her address because, you know, she's very popular. She's popular enough already, from what I understand. Okay, all right. What is the, what is the, uh, what is the deal here? That's right, guitar playing. I remember, I remember why I'm here. Really, I do. Great to see you here, Holly. And Patty, Janine, all the beautiful people. Goodness gracious. And it's only been a week. It's only been 167 hours since we saw each other last. Or maybe it's, well, 167 since the end of the last show. Right? You know, the finer points of math still elude me. But hey, I'm a senior citizen now. I think I can, I think I, <laughs> I'm, I can be let off the hood, the hook for those things. Chrissy Chessmore! Wow. Jeff Steve, Mark Kenny, okay. Rochelle Hamill, Annie Landerholm. Oh my God. We got a quorum, people. We got a quorum. Oh man, we got more than a quorum. We got the all star cast here. Anybody seen Cindy Snyder? Cindy? Oh, she's not having internet trouble. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Come on, hands. Cooperate, don't 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 fail me now. I shouldn't be walking around. I shouldn't be thinking this way. Poison reservoirs and toxic waste squads, it's such a gray ugly day. Wish I was over at John's Always got a joke to tell Beer in the refrigerator and the smoke in the pipe It's so comfortable going to hell I remember when we were just kids We were reading comic books and watching TV We were immortal in a limited way And the bad guys were easy to see My friends all hate their jobs None of us can afford to quit A lot of people waving from the top of the heap But for most of us this could be it I don't usually talk like this I try for rhythm and rhyme I want to show my folks that I'm really good at something But in the mirror I just see passing time I remember when we were just kids We were smoking cigarettes and staying out late We were immortal in a limited way And we loved what we'd learned to hate
was interesting wasn't it interesting little foray a little diving for pearls there well yeah yeah folks Woo. gotta tell you gotta tell you cam and pete oh yes ha oh, okay i'm just kind of i'm just chill i'm just chill the big guy's here hey there big guy how you doing Hey, yeah, the big guy. Thanks, Ma. You're where it all started, you know. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Theo's in the house. Theo! Wait a minute. Where'd I put it? I was going to put it. I was going to wear it. Where'd I put the... Where the heck is the... Oh man, that's not okay. Come on, it's gotta be around here. I was gonna wear it. Excuse me. Where'd I put it? I put it somewhere where I'd find oh. Oops. Whoop. Hold up now. I meant to put this on before showtime. There we go. You can't see that, it's a Little Couth Buzzard there. Little Couth Buzzard button. I told Sarah when we were in to see the Couth Buzzard ah, this last week. I told Sarah, you know the Couth Buzzard needs needs a coffee mug, so you know I can add it to the add it to the collection. She said, Couth Buzzard does have a coffee mug. Just have to go to the website to find it. Yeah. Well I haven't been there yet. So Theo, welcome aboard here, sir. Brad Stenbubba, there's Cindy Snyder. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. Seeing some Seen some different people and some new people and some wonderful people. Anyway, uh, I wanted to say, where did I leave off? I believe it was Timmy Trey. Uh, yep. I haven't seen any Medhallians yet. I know that the one will show up though at some point. Rick Lewis, if Rick Lewis asks, I did hold up the mug. Down there in Portland, Oregon, Mr. Gary Schulstad. Yes, sir. Hmm. Where are we going next? Joe and Cat down in Alabama. You probably don't know that I held the I hold this sucker up every week, whether you're here or not. Because I like to acknowledge my friends. Hmm. Joe and Cat are here tonight from Alabama. Tuning in. I don't I haven't seen Lori Trout yet. Lori Trout? Lori Trout. Lori Trout took a trip down to Nashville. That's where her daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter live. Yes, her grandson, excuse me. Sylvia Robertson. 
Oh my gosh, it's Sylvia. One of the Rob Bob 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 Bobertsons is in the house. This is the Lori Trout honorarium. If anybody sees her, tell her I took my weekly shot. Oh, that's smooth. Yeah. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> Thank you, Lori Trout. Janine Boggs. Janine Boggs, the, the uh, designated chaser. Ah, that's why you live on an island. You can always find your way home. If you get wet, you know you got to go back the other way, right? Is that how that works? There's Val Sanford down there in Portland. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, yeah. Cindy Snyder. Cindy Snyder. I met Cindy at the post office today. And you know what? Cindy helped me. I'll talk about that in a minute. Thank you, Cindy, for ing. And we got them folks out there on the Lake, Lame Cat Ranch. Lame Cat Ranch, Kim and Holly, out there on where you got to take the, to get to, you know, you know the drill. Same thing for Whidbey, at least from this side, too. Then, we heard from, we heard from some folks. We heard from Pauline Jones and Aaron Ochoa this week, regulars here in the treehouse. And here's how we heard from them. That's right. Got me a Mr. Bill mug from, from Pauline and Aaron. Thank you so much. Got an even dozen in the collection now. Running out of desk space. I'm, I'll buy an extra desk. I love this. I love it. Classic. Oh, no! Okay. Back around to where we started. See, I, can't, I can barely reach Cam and Pete anymore because they're way over there. Mm. Oh, there you go. Okay, I don't want to spend too long on this, but uh, I've got to tell you, the last few weeks have been uh, particularly challenging for me uh, physically. And today I was like, I knew, I knew something. I knew that by 6, 6 o'clock this evening, I would start to feel better, and that for this hour, I would be no pain. Pretty much true. But earlier this afternoon, when I ran into Cindy at the mail at the post office, wasn't necessarily true. Now she had texted me earlier in the day, and I had seen the text, and there was, she was going to tell me a story, and 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 you know, and I hadn't gotten around to reading the text text yet. I told her that at the post office. I said, I'm going to read them as soon as I get home. She said, "Okay, it's cool." Hey, there's Aaron Ochoa. Aaron, you and your ma, thanks so much for this. It's perfect. It's perfect. Doesn't it you look just like me? Yeah. My hair used to be that color. No, it didn't. My lips used to be... Never mind. Anyway, thank you. Um, anyway, I read the story. It was a great story. And it was a story that made me feel better, you know? I'd tell you the story, but if that's the story itself, that's between me and Cindy. But uh, she made me feel better. I got home from the post office. I read Cindy's stuff. Made me feel better. Started thinking, oh, can I, what else can I do? Because I was feeling pretty rocky. I thought maybe I should take a little nap. So I took a nap, 30, 40 minutes. I think I was in and out for a while. Got up, felt better. Felt even better. Yeah, then it was around 4.30, something around there. I said, okay, I'm going to give myself a B vitamin shot, which is another one of the things that I do uh, on a fairly regular basis. So I gave myself an injection of B vitamins. And here we are. And I'm pain-free for the time being, except when I'm playing. It gets a little bad, but it's, it's better. And uh, so I just wanted to say, if you think that, uh, that you're the only one that's getting something out of this year, this is my favorite hour of the week, too. Now, Aaron wanted to hear a song last week, I believe. Wasn't that you? Since I know you're in the room now. See 
dreams of self-conscious boys Schooled on the island to misfit toys You'll find in my pockets the tricks I employ For the only magic I know My dad had a few moves and taught them to me He'd let me sit in and sing the harmony I'd follow his fingers wherever they'd lead Into the only magic I know None of my teachers were ever aware Of amazed concentration and wide open stare They took me spelunking as if on a dare to the only magic I know It can get dark in here On the way to the light And it's sparse in here When there's nothing to write And if you park in here Then there's no end in sight I know It can get dark in here, on the way to the light And it's sparse in here, when there's nothing to write And if you park in here, then there's no end in sight I know So why am I still standing out here on these boards Scratching these vocals and strumming these chords There's a girl in the front row who never looks bored By the only magic I know By the only magic I know By the only magic I know Close enough, huh? Huh? Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Pauline. Tim Nelson's checking in. Jamie Turner's in the house. There you go. Oh, boy. It's great to see you guys. Great to see you guys. Whew. Yeah. So it's been a challenging time, and the it sounds like we got a loose shingle up on the... <laughs> It's the hand, ladies and gentlemen. The hand. The hand is here. The hand. The 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 the, the hand. The hand is. <laughs> Ooh. Uh oh. There we go. There we go. Ah, oh, Ray and Sylvia are here. The Rob, Bob, 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 uh, let's see, Alan Hicks, the big guys in the house from Spokane, Brad Stenberg from over there, and uh, Cindy Clark from over there, and uh, Cindy Snyder from over there, <laughs> Holly Tuttle and Kim Nelson. I hope Holly and Kim are here. I, I know Kim's here. Holly might be working tonight. She's been having to work evenings for a while. But Bill Kaufman. Hey, Bill. Now, Bill. Bill is in. Where's Bill? 
Mm. I can't remember where. Where are you at? Pen no, not Pennsylvania. I can't remember where Bill's at. Tell us, Bill. Where are you? I know you're right here. But, uh, but uh, you got to be more specific. Sorry. Jeff Steve is in the house. Roland and Dorothy. Rochelle. Monica Holverstadt. Mark Kenny. Chrissy Chestmore. Katrina. Katrina. Kathy and Loris. Joseph Webb. Joe and Kat. Aaron and Pauline. Theo. Oh, my goodness. I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy. Tom's River, New Jersey. Wow, we got New York, New Jersey, Alabama. And uh, Holly, I think you're in Ohio. I think Holly's in Ohio. Man, oh man. We're transcontinental, people. We're transcontinental. Taking the red eye. Yes, indeed. There'll be some red eyes in the morning. There's some red eyes this evening. Where am I at? Oh boy, goodness gracious. I salute each and every one. I don't know how much I got in me tonight, folks, to be quite honest with you. But uh, let's let's just uh, let's just run it out, shall we? Let's run it to the end. Let's I might be running on fumes, but we still got fumes. <laughs> This song is called The Eye. This is on the water dance. And uh, this is a song about realizing that I wasn't going to be able to make my living playing music. Not because I didn't know how to play music or I didn't know how to write songs or any of that kind of stuff. But I didn't like being on the road. Didn't like being away from home. I like this space right here. Which is why I'm so comfortable in the treehouse. Because this is my creative space. I sit right over there and write every morning. Anyway, so that's what this song's about. Kind of, sort of. So high before I found a better place, before the map became my face. Because I can't be who I've been Because of the muses on the wind Because of books I cannot shut Because the road becomes the rut There's trees to try and keep Now there's kids who need our sleep Now the acres are untamed Now so much remains unchanged Before I looked it in the eye That's the eye, yeah, from the water dance. If you want to hear a better version of it, dial up Bandcamp, listen to it off the water dance. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, there's Lori Trout. Lee Fox, 
Lee Fox, I always think of you when I sing that song, man. Unbelievable. That was Lee's favorite song back in the day. Happy to have him. Did you hear something? Did you, did you hear something? Just Did you hear a creep? What, what is that? What is that? That's the hand! Jamie Turner, Lori Trout. Ah. Mark Kenny wants to know, do you have any songs at the 8th fret? <laughs> if I didn't know better, I'd say that was a request. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just played a song on the 8th fret. Nine, ten. I just played a song on the 8th fret. That, 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 that one I did. That's right. So I know that for the last couple of weeks I've been talking more than I've been playing. Well, it's because I got the, I got the, I got the, I got the jitters. I don't know what I got. I got issues, you know. You know, we've all got issues. Yeah. Uh, for one hour of the week, mine seem to take a back seat, but they remind me while I'm playing. They say, hey, Bill. Bill. In case you forgot about it. Well, let's dip back. Let's dip way, way back. Let's go back to 1983, 84, around in there somewhere. Let's see what's happening. See what's happening back there. See if we know anybody back there. Yeah. I knew several of you people back there. Actually, I think I knew most of you people back there. I hear the beat, I feel the beat, but I'm still stifled by my limitations. Wait a minute, Bill. Hey, Cindy, my capo was on the wrong fret. Stifled by my limitations See this guitar It's brought me far But it can't handle every situation Ooh, I want to go electric Ooh, it takes breath to go electric Ooh, won't you help me go electric Let me sing in your bar But you say Jumping cause they can't escape the beat I look at my room Stare at the gloom Some funky rhythm now would surely be a treat Ooh, I wanna go electric Ooh, it's somehow more eclectic Ooh, won't you help me go electric And let me sing in your bar It's a nice bar Play here. Maybe take us both far. Ooh, I wanna go electric. Ooh, where the music's much more hectic. Ooh, won't you help me go electric? And let me sing in your bar. But you say, No way, Jack. We see the doorway. Come back another day As someone else Now ain't that just the way I mean the way of the world You decapitate a squirrel Backing out of your driveway And what will the Rabinowitzes say Sometimes it just don't pay To start your day Was a little ragged around the edges there people a little ragged around the edges there but hey what are edges for 
You know, you put the, you take some edges, you put the 60 some years on them, they're gonna get ragged. But they're still edges, they're still there, right? Right, people? Now, has everybody seen the decorations tonight? We got the, we got the Cooth Buzzard button on. Because I haven't gotten me a Cooth Buzzard cup yet. There it is, Cooth Buzzard. We got Fred Babb. Art won't hurt you. Yes, indeed. And what else we got? We got the poetry break! Poetry break! Poetry break! Poetry break! I hope everybody's ready. I hope everybody's ready. Where's my stump? Get your stump, Bill. Drag it on over here. Drag it on over. There it is. Now, folks, because I have been, oh, how shall I say, slightly inconvenienced by uh, physical discomforts of one kind or two for the last few weeks, I have been, I have been exploring poetry. Don't get me wrong. But I thought, this whole comfort food thing, I thought, let's read some greatest hits. Let's do that. Let's uh, read some of the favorites. See what it's like when you hear them again. You all right with that? You better be, because, you know. What was that? Oh, sorry, I can't hear you. What can I say? So I thought I would read some of my... Hey, Carly List is here. Lee Fox, man, Lee... Surprise. Great. Welcome, Carly. Welcome, Lee. Man, I can't believe Lee showed up right when I was playing that tune. Ooh. Kind of spooky. Kind of spooky. So, poetry. We're going to start. We're just going to dip into several. We got some Richard Hugo. We got some Mary Oliver. We got some William Stafford. We got some Jack Gilbert. Starting with one of my favorite books of all time, 31 Letters and 13 Dreams. By Richard Hugo. Mm. There's just one. I mean, I like all these poems. Trust me. They're all good. Yeah. But this one. Now, I don't know if you can find... If you can find this used around, but there's a collected Richard Hugo. It's out in paperback. It's got a nice uh, introduction by Bill Kittredge in it that came out some years back, and that's, that's worth having. That's worth having. I'm still working on his first... Like, his first two books... Uh, a Run of Jacks, and uh, what's the other one? Bill Willem. What's the second book? A Run of Jacks, and was it Death of a Kapowson Tavern? No, that's that is his third book. Hi there. Hi. Hey, maybe if I look in the front of this book, Bill, it might tell me. It might tell me what the, what the books are. Don't make a liar out of me now, Bill. There we go. A Run of Jacks and Get Death of a Kapowson ta Tavern. You know, I like Death of a Kapowson Tavern. I have trouble with A Run of Jacks and Good Luck and Cracked Italian, but all the rest of them. Starting with Lady and Kicking Horse Reservoir, I just went... This is called Letter to... This is, there are, these are letter poems. And this is a letter to Simic from Boulder, Charles Simic. As, uh, well, Richard Hugo tells you. Now, Richard Hugo was a, was a bombardier in World War II. Just so you know. Dear Charles, And so we met once in San Francisco, and I learned I bombed you long ago in Belgrade when you were five. I remember. We were after a bridge on the Danube, hoping to cut the German armies off as they fled north from Greece. We missed. Not unusual, considering I was one of the bombardiers. I couldn't hit my ass if I sat on the Norden or rode a bomb down singing the Star Spangled Banner. I remember Belgrade opened like a rose when we came in. Not much flack. I didn't know about the daily hangings, the 80,000 Slavs who dangled from German ropes in the city. Lessons to the rest. I was interested mainly in staying alive. That moment the plane jumped free from the weight of bombs and we went home. What did you speak then? Serb, I suppose. And what did your mind do with the terrible howl of bombs? What is Serb for fear? It must be the same as in English. One long primitive wail of dying children, one child fixed forever in dead stare. 
I don't apologize for the war or what I was. I was willingly confused by the times. I think I even believed in heroics for others, not for me. I believed the necessity of that suffering world, hoping it would learn not to do it again. But I was young. The world never learns. History has a way of making the past palatable, the dead a dream. Dear Charles, I'm glad you avoided the bombs, that you live with us now and write poems. I must tell you, though, I felt funny that day in San Francisco. I kept saying to myself, he was one on the ground that day, the sky eerie mustard and our engines roaring everything else out of the way. And the world comes clean in moments like that for survivors. The world comes clean as clouds in summer, the pure puffed white, soft birds careening in and out, our lives with a chance to drift and slow over the world, our bomb bay is empty, the target forgotten, the enemy ignored. Nice to meet you finally after all that murderous hate, all that mindless hate. Next time, if you want to be sure you survive, Sit on the bridge I'm trying to hit and wave. I'm coming in on course, but nervous, and my crosshairs flutter. Wherever you are on earth, you are safe. I am aiming, but my bombs are candy, and I've lost the lead plane. And I've lost the lead plane. Your friend, Dick. Your friend, Dick. Jesus. That's a powerful piece of personal memorabilia, don't you think? Oh, man. Man, oh man. Okay. Remember this guy? Jack Gilbert. Get the glare off, Bill. Refusing Heaven is the name of the book. Another one that we all should have in our collections by now. I want to just read a couple of these. These poems are so intense. Uh, I can't mo take more than a couple. This is called By Small and Small Midnight to 4 a.m. It's a poem about grief, I guess. By Small and Small Midnight to 4 a.m. For 11 years, I have regretted it. Regret it, regretted that I did not do what I wanted to do as I sat there those four hours watching her die. I wanted to crawl in among the machinery and hold her in my arms, knowing the elementary leftover bit of her mind would dimly recognize it was me carrying her to where she was going. I'll read that one again. For eleven years I have regretted it, regretted that I did not do what I wanted to do as I sat there those four hours watching her die. I wanted to crawl in among the machinery and hold her in my arms, knowing the elementary, elementary leftover bit of her mind would dimly recognize it was me carrying her to where she was going. takes a lot of uh, a certain kind of attention to write something like that, I think. And Jack Gilbert definitely had that kind of attention. This poem proves it. This is called A Brief for the Defense. I have read this one here before. A Brief for the Defense. Sorrow everywhere. Slaughter everywhere. If babies are not starving someplace, they are starving somewhere else, with flies in their nostrils. But we enjoy our lives because that's what God wants. Otherwise, the mornings before summer dawn would not be made so fine. The Bengal tiger would not be fashioned so miraculously well. The poor women at the fountain are laughing together between the suffering they have known 
and the awfulness in their future, smiling and laughing while somebody in the village is very sick. There is laughter every day in the terrible streets of Calcutta, and the women laugh in the cages of Bombay. If we deny our happiness, resist our satisfaction, we lessen the importance of that deprivation. We must risk delight. We can do without pleasure, but not delight, not enjoyment. We must have the stubbornness to accept our gladness in the ruthless furnace of this world. To make injustice the only measure of our attention is to praise the devil. If the locomotive of the Lord runs us down, we should give thanks that the end had magnitude. We must admit there will be music despite everything. We stand on the prow again of a small ship anchored late at night in the tiny port looking over to the sleeping island. The waterfront is three shuttered cafes and one naked light burning. To hear the faint sound of oars in the silence as a rowboat comes slowly out, then goes slowly back, is truly worth all the years of sorrow that are to come. I would read that again if I thought I could. I would read it ten times because it's just so good. So good. Now, you see I'm reading some pretty bleak stuff, but there's, there's uplift buried in the bleakness. It's all there. The entirety of the experience is in those last two poems, those last three poems. Man. Man. Okay. If there's one William Stafford book that everybody ought to have on their shelf, this is the one. Because it's edited by our friend Robert Bly. William Stafford's friend Robert Bly. Bly is the one who put this book together, arranged it thematically, and packed it with absolute dynamite. Okay? Okay. A couple of William Staffords, maybe three. First, I want to read at the Unnational Monument along the Canadian border. You got that right. The Unnational Monument along the Canadian border. This is the field where the battle did not happen, where the unknown soldier did not die. This is the field where grass joined hands, where no monument stands, and the only heroic thing is the sky. Birds fly here without any sound, unfolding their wings across the open. No people killed or were killed on this ground, hallowed by neglect and an air so tame that people celebrate it by forgetting its name. For my young friends who are afraid. This is Diane's favorite. For my young friends who are afraid. There is a country to cross you will find in the corner of your eye, in the quick slip of your foot, ere far down a snap that might have caught. And maybe for you, for me, a high passing voice that finds its way by being afraid. That country is there for us, carried as it is, carried as it is crossed. What you fear will not go away. It will take you into yourself and bless you and keep you. That's the world, and we all live there. Read that one once more. For my young friends who are afraid. There is a country to cross you will find in the corner of your eye in the quick slip of your foot, ere far down a snap 
that might have caught. And maybe for you, for me, a high passing voice that finds its way by being afraid. That country is there for us, carried as it is crossed. What you fear will not go away. It will take you into yourself and bless you and keep you. That's the world, and we all live there. And then, probably Stafford's, well, along with Traveling Through the Dark, this might be his most famous poem. I wonder if I should save that till the end. No. A Ritual to Read to Each Other. If you don't know the kind of person I am, and I don't know the kind of person you are, a pattern that others made may prevail in the world, and following the wrong God home, we may miss our star. For there is many a small betrayal in the mind, a shrug that lets the fragile sequence break, sending with shouts the horrible errors of childhood storming out to play through the broken dike. And as elephants parade, holding each elephant's tail, but if one wanders, the circus won't find the park. I call it cruel, and maybe the root of all cruelty, to know what occurs, but not recognize the fact. And so I appeal to a voice, to something shadowy, a remote, important region in all who talk. Though we could fool each other, we should consider, lest the parade of our mutual life get lost in the dark. For it is important that awake people be awake, or a breaking line may discourage them back to sleep. The signals we give, yes or no, or maybe, should be clear. The darkness around us is deep. It's called A Ritual to Read to Each Other. If you don't own a copy of it, type that into Google and look at it. Look at it on the page. It's worth studying. It's worth studying. Okay. My favorite Mary Oliver book is called House of Light. It's my favorite because it's the first Mary Oliver book I read. And it doesn't have wild geese in it. No, no but it's got some other stuff that's pretty amazing. Including these two poems, and I will finish with these two. This is called Spring. Somewhere, a black bear has just risen from sleep and is staring down the mountain. All night, in the brisk and shallow restlessness of early spring, I think of her, her four black fists flicking the gravel, her tongue like a red fire touching the grass, the cold water. There is only one question. How to love this world? I think of her rising like a black and leafy ledge to sharpen her claws against the silence of the trees. Whatever else my life is, with its poems and its music and its glass cities, it is also this dazzling darkness coming down the mountain, breathing and tasting. All day I think of her, her white teeth, her wordlessness, her perfect love. Singapore. In Singapore, in the airport, a darkness was ripped from my eyes. In the women's restroom, one compartment stood open. A woman knelt there, washing something in the white bowl. Disgust argued in my stomach, and I felt in my pocket for my ticket. A poem should always have birds in it. Kingfishers say, with their bold eyes and gaudy wings, Rivers are pleasant, and of course, 
trees, a waterfall, or if that's not possible, a fountain rising and falling. A person wants to stand in a happy place in a poem. When the woman turned, I could not answer her face. Her beauty and her embarrassment struggled together, and neither could win. She smiled and I smiled. What kind of nonsense is this? Everybody needs a job. Yes, a person wants to stand in a happy place in a poem. But first we must, we must watch her as she stares down at her labor, which is dull enough. She is washing the tops of the airport ashtrays, as big as hubcaps with a blue rag. Her small hands turn the metal, scrubbing and rinsing. She does not work slowly, nor quickly, but like a river. Her dark hair is like the wing of a bird. I don't doubt for a moment that she loves her life, and I want her to rise up from the crust and the slop and fly down to the river. This probably won't happen, but maybe it will. If the world were only pain and logic, who would want it? Of course it isn't. Neither do I mean anything miraculous, but only the light that can shine out of a life. I mean the way she unfolded and refolded the blue cloth, the way her smile was only for my sake. I mean the way this poem is filled with trees and birds. See, now that's almost exactly the same poem as a brief for the defense. And in a lot of ways, it's like Letter to Simic from Boulder. All of them contain bits, bits of the same stuff. We cannot not be happy in order to feel better about ourselves. We can't. We can't do it. Can't do it. Oh. I've been impressed in the last 13 years with uh, the kind of happy the happiness that I'm capable of. I wouldn't have thought it. How's everybody doing? Did everybody survive? Raise your heart 
of bone to a breakfast table where you're not alone from passion's moment a wealth of blood a tear of feeling and then a flood it falls together when it falls apart each new beginning so raise your heart It falls together when it falls apart This new beginning So raise your heart Raise your heart Raise your heart From the album of the same name. That's a song I wrote for Diane and for Diane's mom. Yeah. Oh no, Mr. Bill. I'm convinced that uh, <clears throat> you can't really uh, experience true happiness unless you've experienced some true suffering and vice versa. You know? Each emotional thing informs its opposite, not opposite, its other polarity. And I'm still trying to figure all this thinking out. It's hard to do it as I go. I should have written a few things down. I got all this paperwork here. You think I could have taken more notes. What are you going to do? I don't know. What, what am I going to do next? Well, hey, kids, gather around. Time to talk about some birthdays. That's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about some birthdays. Hey, we'll do one more song. What do you say about that? Birthdays this week, ladies and gentlemen. Since I'm going to be back next week, the 21st. Um, you're going to get sick of me. That's what's going to happen. As we move into fall, you're going to get sick of me. It's okay. It's okay. Like I say, every week, attendance is not mandatory. We do take a roll. But we don't hold it against you. I promise. I promise. Who's got a birthday today? Well, there's only one that I know of. It's my old buddy, John Hanron. John Hanron, having a birthday today. Happy birthday, John. Tomorrow, another old friend from up there in the Meadow. Up there in the Meadow, Miss Robin Wheeler. Yeah, happy birthday tomorrow, Robin. Think French fries. Yes, indeed. Robin Wheeler. On Thursday, though, oh, ho, ho, oh, ho, ho, Kathy Brewer. Kathy Brewer, Thursday, the 16th of uh, September. Kathy, happy birthday this Thursday. Also this Thursday, Terry Meisenberg, Tim, Roland, Rochelle, all those stadiumites in the crowd. They remember Mr. Meisenberg. Well, he's still alive and kicking. Having a birthday on Thursday. Happy birthday, Terry. Also on Thursday, a couple of local uh, musicians of note, Nancy K. Dillon is having her birthday on Thursday. Happy birthday, Nancy. And Mr. Brian Butler, fine, fine blues guitarist, songwriter. Happy birthday on Thursday, Brian Butler. Okay. Friday, the 17th, Laura Fine, an old friend of mine from up in the Met House. She was the first person to uh, hire me to play up there for the Met House Arts Organization way back, I don't know, late 80s sometime. I think the first time me and Ray Rob Bob 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 also having a birthday on Friday the 17th. Happy birthday, Mark. Saturday the 18th. Da -da -da -da. A uh, Whitworth alum that I have been, I'm hoping to talk to soon, Mr. Dave Eldheisen, is celebrating his birthday on Saturday the 18th. Yes, sir. As I used to refer to him, Mr. Veld Dave Heisen, having his birthday on Saturday. Also, another local uh, person with a beautiful singing voice, Becca Palm having her birthday on Saturday, and Mr. Bud Manning having his birthday on Saturday as well. Happy birthday to Becca and Bud and Veld. On Sunday, Shannon Rook is having a birthday, and on Monday, Mr. Mike Steves. I don't know if there's any uh, relation. No, I think Mike Steves is plural. Jeff Steve is singular. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Gotta keep my facts straight. That's how Bill has to roll. And that's it for if I If I've missed any, well, it's because... People don't have them posted. People don't write to me and say, Hey, Bill, don't forget to talk about... 
You know, you can communicate with me during the, the other 167 hours of the week. Sometimes stuff gets lost in all these comments. Now, last week, <laughs> to tell the absolute truth after last week's show, went downstairs, which is what I always do. We'll go back downstairs to my easy chair, take my computer with me so I can go through and respond to all the comments. Yeah, I wake up, woke up about midnight sitting in my easy chair. I had passed out completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I need to check on something here because um, how long has it been? How long has it been? Mm. I played this song back in August, but you know, I'm in the mood to play something. Since Mark brought it up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten! I count ten, Mark. Can that really be true? Oh, that can't be right. That can't be right. Maybe Mark, Mark was right. It's eight. That can't be right either. The capo almost doesn't go around the neck. Yeah. Mark wanted... I think this is... Mark was making a request. I guess it was the sixth fret that the only magic I know is on. Math. My strong suit. If I'm going to end with something, I want to end with something that I could keep singing for the next two hours without hurting a bit. And that's this one. It's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. Heidi Muller? Better late than never, Hattie. Glad to see you. Sorry I'm not the tippy-top shape, but you know, if I do this every week, I'm bound to get stronger, right? Bound to get stronger. The weather gets cooler, Billy gets stronger. Maybe we can figure out what this latest little thing is. See my, see my IV tattoo there? Always nice to have an IV tattoo. Oh, my war wounds. Yeah. We're figuring it out. We'll dial it up. In the meantime, song I wrote for a hand a little while back. It's on the uh, night sky. This could be my favorite song. Diane and I went and saw a group called Open the Door for Three at the Finney Neighborhood Center back when the world actually was, when those kinds of things were available in the world. And I love that music. All these sad, horrible, sad songs, but with these bouncy kind of rhythms, and tempos that just made you feel like, whoa, yeah, let me, let me dance while I weep, yeah. So, I think that had something to do with the way this song goes. I haven't played it since August. Although I play it here quite frequently. During the other 167 hours of the week. And will you come away with me, oh Diane, my darling? And will you come away with me to lie on the verge of the salty sea? And no, it's, wait a minute, I'm gonna start that again. I'm gonna start it again. This is not positioned quite right. friends who won't come back and to finally make my 
at peace with that Oh, Diane, my darling And will they dig a proper grave? Oh, Diane, my darling And will they dig a proper grave Near to the drum of the breaking Will the grandkids all behave? Oh, Diane, my darling. And will they sing a song I wrote? Oh, Diane, my darling. And will they sing a song I wrote? They found in the pocket of a threadbare coat and then folded up into a paper boat. Oh, Diane, my darling. Will they shed a grateful tear, oh Diane, my darling? And will they shed a grateful tear for the rough old sea that brought us here? And then raise a glass to the coming year, oh Diane, my darling. And will you come away with me, oh Diane, my darling? Will you come away with me to lie on the verge of the salty sea? And know it's where we're meant to be. Oh, Diane, my darling. Whoa. A little ragged, a little ragged, but we lived. We lived, didn't we? We lived. Thank you, folks. Thank you for coming back. Yeah. Thanks to the folks that don't hear, hear that frequently for coming back, too. Yeah, here, there's Mark Eiler. Wow, cool. Great to see so many friends I haven't seen in a while. Hope you'll come back again sometime. Not a have-to thing, but if you're in the neighborhood, if you're in the neighborhood, swing on by. There's always plenty of refreshment. Always plenty. Might even let you use the Mr. Bill cup. Eh, not for a while yet. I'm going to enjoy it myself for a while. Mm. 167 hours from now, we will do this again. In the meantime, take care of each other. Remember, it's about feeling all of it. Celebrating all of it. Okay? Good night.